Hello and good evening, CTS 267, Section 840 students for the Spring 2017 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP T-Shoot course, and this evening's video tutorial is going to be a very important one now that we've gotten into taking the configurations for the trouble tickets and loading those on the devices, and we ran into a number of hurdles uh, with some different approaches that we were taking. And so I want to review and recap each of the approaches. So we're going to take a look at the caveats for simply cutting and pasting the configurations. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at uh, the drag and drop feature that we took a look at in TerraTerm as well as Secure CRT. And then we go ahead and say Send ASCII. Uh, we're also going to TFTP uh, the configurations and use the config replace command uh, in order to make those changes. And we're going to talk about the version error that we see, the lack of the config, uh, the trouble ticket configurations, not having the version statement and that error that we're seeing. And I'm also going to show you that with 12.2 code, I didn't run into that problem. But with the 15 code, and that's what we're using, that's what we should be using, uh, we do see that issue, and then we'll talk about each of those in turn. So again, uh, the the use case here is you're a student in the class, uh, you've got your configurations here for your trouble tickets, and I'm simply going to use uh, lab 4-1 as an example. Uh, and so the, what we need to do is, for each of these trouble tickets here, right, you can see this is going to be for the access layer switch 1, troubleshooting ticket uh, A, and then access uh, layer switch one, trouble ticket uh, B, and then C. So we've got three trouble tickets, and you'll notice we've got the access layer switch, we've got the distro one switch, distro two switch, router one, router two, and router three. Now, again, you might be thinking to yourself, boy, this is going to take a lot of time uh, to have to click on each of these, copy and paste everything from each of these and to save them off and then to choose one of the methods I'm going to show you to get these configurations onto the components in question. However, when you weigh that against having to manually type it in, uh, what we're going to see here are the, the different ways we'll look at how to get the configuration onto the component. Uh, it's going to be much, much quicker. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, if we were to click on lab 4.1, router1 TTA config dot txt. And so what I'm going to do here uh, is I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste the configuration onto the device. Uh, now I'm going to make some edits to it because my I, ha I have an ISRG too. It's a 1941, but I don't have serial 000 and 001. So this I'll be removing Everything else is going to be a go. So the way that we would do this, and I typically like to start here at the bottom of the file, is I'm simply going to go ahead, I'm going to scroll up to the very top. I'm going to do a right mouse click. We're going to copy this configuration, and I'm going to use Adobe Brackets. Right now, you're going to want to put it into a text editor. So I'll just simply say File New. We'll come up here, and actually we'll just say Edit Paste. And so here's the config. Now, the key here is you want this in a vanilla text editor, Notepad, Notepad++, uh, VI, uh, or Adobe Brackets, Sublime Text even, right? So now remember, Sublime Text, you're going to have to buy that. I mean, you can, get a, you can download a trial version, but ultimately you're going to want to pay for it. Uh, it is right to use. Uh, so to speak, I guess you can you know continually use it without paying. Although I have a paid copy, I wanted to make sure that those guys express I express my appreciation because I love Sublime Text. But again, Adobe Brackets is free, uh, and it works on the Mac. So you can see I took out the serial interfaces, and that's okay, right? So here we go. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say Edit Select All. I actually didn't want to do that. Let's say Edit Undo. So Edit Select All, and actually it brought the serial interfaces back in. So here we go. Let's get these out of here real quick. All right, so edit select all. I'm going to grab the config. I'm going to say edit copy. Now, when I come to the router, it's going to be very important that I simply don't just hit enter from user exec. Because if you take a look at that config file that we just had up, there is no command up here at the top 
uh, to get me into privilege exec mode and then to put me into global config. So we don't see an enable command. We don't see a configure terminal command. So that tells me, and every one of these troubleshooting configs is exactly like this. You don't have the enable command. You don't have the configure terminal command. So how do we get it onto the router? Well, we get go from user exec to privilege exec into global config, and then I can simply paste the command in. Now, my expectation would be, and as we saw in class, uh, that you're going to end up with errors, right? And the errors that we were all getting were a result of simply just sending too much input to the buffer, right? Sort of overflowing the buffer, and then these lines would wrap and you would get an error. Now, you can see here, I didn't get an error. But again, chances are you're going to see an error. And there's a very important caveat here. What you want to do is you want to set the buffer input rate. So I come up to Options, Session Options. I believe it's under Advanced, or where are we at here? Hold on. Emulation, no. Modes, Emacs, I'm trying to remember where, oh, there, Advanced. It is uh, under Advanced. So Line Send Serial Delay right in milliseconds now the course is recommending a hundred milliseconds now if you're still getting errors what you should do is increase it to 250 so I'm gonna do it with 250 milliseconds and let's just simply I can paste it right back in here again and I say paste and actually it highlighted something that I had highlighted there so let me let me grab this file again. So again, we're going to say edit, select all, and then edit copy, come back over here. And now you should see that the lines, you'll notice they're going in a little slower than they were with the 5 millisecond. Obviously, we've increased it, I think, to 250 milliseconds. So if you're getting errors, right, and you would, you know, you get the caret underneath the text saying, you know, command not found or can't run command or whatever, increase the buffer line rate and I again I would recommend 250 milliseconds as you can see I mean what are we looking at here probably 15 seconds to get the configuration onto the device and it should be wrapping up here shortly again it takes a little longer last night in class I demoed it with 500 milliseconds and that seemed like almost an outage was taking place and so there you go so when I say uh, show run we can see that I've got everything from that config in my running configuration, right? So I'm going to talk about saving the file off because at this point I have the sort of golden copy, right? I've got the base config for router 1, lab 41, trouble ticket A. Now, if I'm working on this trouble ticket and I wanted to revert back, do I want to have to cut and paste? No, I probably want to save this off. So if I were to type dir, you can see what, what I have in here, right? I've got some, some uh, iOS files in here, a base config file that I use when I'm doing some stuff in my lab. So this was my recommendation, is to create some directories with the make dir command. So I'm going to say make dir, and we'll call it tshoot. Now, what I'd love to be able to do here, just like you can in, in Linux Unix, is do a make dir dash p and then put all the directories in there, and it would create the top level directory and all of the intermediate directories for me. On iOS, you can't do that. So I can't say make dir t shoot and we'll say labs, right? It'll say it'll tell you that it doesn't exist, right? So it gives me this error that that it doesn't exist. So you've got to do it one at a time. So I'm going to say make dir t shoot, and you can see created my directory t shoot. Then we're going to call it back up here. And I'm going to say make dir. Now that I have t shoot, I can create the labs directory under t shoot. And now it's going to work. Now I pull the command back and I'm going to say lab, and I'll just say 41, right? Because we know it's going to be 41. And then I would say tta for trouble ticket A. So if I wanted to save this off, so like, and I'll, we're going to do config replace here uh, when we get through some of these other options, uh, it's much quicker 
uh, to simply do a config replace. In fact, you'll see it takes all of about five seconds and the configuration is already stored locally for you. So how do I make a copy of the base trouble ticket A lab 4.1 config for router one? I simply say copy running config and then I'm going to put the and this was in Linux, Unix, so we would say the absolute path name, and actually a little mistake there, I need to get a space between config and flash. So I would put what we would refer to as the absolute path name down to TTA, and then the forward slash is a separator, and now I'm going to put the name of my file. So I would simply say this is going to be router1-lab41-troubleticket A. And that's it. And you can see, we just copied off 4,667 bytes. So if I wanted to view the file, I can use the more utility. And again, simply provide the absolute path name, including the file name. And there we go. And so that's the file. And so we're going to come back and take a look at this uh, when we use config replace. But so that's the first option, right, is you can cut and paste again. With TerraTerm and Secure CRT, highly, highly recommended that you go to your session options, you go to Advanced for Secure CRT, uh, and I don't have TerraTerm on the uh, the Mac here, but again, find that line buffer send delay setting and increase it to about 100, or you can go a little higher if you continue to have uh, have issues. But I think we were having success with 100 milliseconds, right? So I'll just leave this at 250 milliseconds, and then create sort of a little directory structure that you can save those configurations on the local router and switch with so that I don't have to go back uh, and I don't have to go back and uh, cut and paste again, right? So now it's, it's permanently on the router here. So as long as I don't delete it, we're going to have it. So that's option one is cut and paste. And again, buffer delay, that line send delay, very, very important. So what we can also do is we can save the file and with secure CRT, I can actually sort of drag and drop uh, the file. And let me show you what I mean. So we saved it. Let's say I don't want to cut and paste. So let's come up here. I'm going to say file, uh, save as, and we are in the, we'll go to documents. I've got a T-shoot lab config here. And you can see we've got the names of the files in here. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll just overwrite lab 4.1 router TTA. So I'm going to save it, right? And I'm saving it into the finder. And do you want to replace? Absolutely. So we replace it, right? So let me resize this window here. We should have, and where was that at? Let's get Finder up. And this is very, very cool. Now, this will work with Secure CRT and TerraTerm. And again, TerraTerm, totally free. Secure CRT, you got 30 days, and then you've got uh, to purchase it if you'd like it. So again, the same rule applies, though. We've got to be in global config for this to work. And it's literally this simple. I'm going to grab my configuration. I'm going to drag it. Whoops, I'm going to drag it over here, and then I'm going to release the mouse button. And you'll see when I release the mouse button, I get all these options. I'm going to say, send ASCII. And there you go. And you can see it's just like cutting and pasting because this, this is buffering. It's definitely slower than that 5 millisecond time. And again, this is another option. So if you don't want to save them locally on the device, this would be option two, is you don't want to create that directory structure with make dir. You don't want to have to save it off. You simply want to save it with your text editor and then drag and drop the config in, which is identical to cutting and pasting. It's doing the same thing, except maybe this is a little quicker for you. You prefer this method. So here's option number two. Copy and paste the config from the Netacad website, put it into Notepad, Notepad++, brackets, sublime text, whatever the case may be. Save it to the local system, and this works on Windows as well, right? If you're running Secure CRT TerraTerm on Windows, this works. Uh, pull your folder or finder up, and then simply drag and drop your config. I'll bring this back over here because we don't want to do that. But drag and drop the config, make sure you're in global config mode, and take a look at that. 
Super quick, right? Super quick. What was that? 15 seconds. I've got my router one trouble ticket A config on here. I'm ready to rock and roll. So that would be option number two is the drag and the drop. Now we're going to talk about the how to, you know, TFTP came up. So we can TFTP the file onto the router. And now we're going to talk about config replace. So if I didn't cut and paste it on here, and I didn't drag and drop it on here, I can TFTP the file onto the router. And so let's do this. I actually have my uh, the black MacBook Pro plugged in uh, to do my TFTP work for me. Uh, and we're going to see the version error that Evan, and thank goodness Evan was, uh, was on the ball last night hunting this down right away is this version hang-up thing that we've got, right? So you'll notice when I cut and pasted, when I drag and dropped, no problems, no problems at all. So here's TFTP, and in order to do this, let me uh, do show run interface gig zero zero. I'm plugged into interface gig zero zero, so good. So let's say interface gig zero zero, IP address 10.1.1.1. So I'm configuring the IP address, we're gonna say no shut, so that I can ping oops, sorry, 10.1.1.10, so that I can ping the TFTP server, which is just simply uh, my black MacBook. And you can see there we've got connectivity, right? So everything looks good. So let's get back to privilege exec mode. Let me say dir. Now, ideally, I would dump it down that directory, that the directory path we created, which was uh, the T shoot, and then it went down to labs, and then I think it was lab 4.1 or configs or something like that. But to save time, I'm just going to pull it in here to the main, uh, the, the top level directory in Flash. So let's say copy TFTP colon Flash colon. The TFTP server is 10.1.1.10. Uh, the file name is simply lab41 dash, what did I name it? Router1 dash TTA, right? And there we go. And again, very small file. Uh, 2,536 bytes. So now when I say dir, you can see we've got this file here. So now that I have the file here, and again, when I copied and pasted and saved it, I also have a copy of the file down that T shoot directory path, right? So config replace is what we're going to talk about right now. And this is a phenomenal command. Now, this is not a merge, right? So this is not me saying copy flash colon lab 41 copy and paste to the running config. So that command right there is going to execute what's called a merge. And typically for a wholesale rip and replace of a configuration, which is what we're interested in doing, this is probably not the simplest way to get it done, right? And what I mean by merge uh, is it's going to administratively down your interfaces. Uh, it's also that you could end up with some configuration left over that you don't want to have hanging around. And that's what the copy command facilitates for us. And again, we're talking about a wholesale rip and replace instantaneous swapping of configurations. So in order to achieve that, we want to use config replace. So again, this command will work. This copy flash command, you see there, that would work, but that's not what we want because there's going to be some side effects that are kind of hanging around after we run that command that we're not going to want to have to deal with. Again, we want simply to, to you know, quickly move from trouble ticket A, let's do trouble ticket B. You know, and so then all you need to do is get onto the six devices, the three routers and three switches, and simply go config replace, boom, put in the name of the trouble ticket that you're going to be working on for all six devices, and off you go. You're ready to go. So we've just TFTP'd the file up here. There it is, lab41-r1-tta. So what do I want to do? I want to say configure. Now, we're typically, we're always typing config or conf t, config terminal, right? Well, the configure command has a lot of options, okay? And the video that I'm going to be doing later this evening to follow this video up is all about the archive feature, where we're going to talk about um, doing config revert, right? How do we fall? How do we roll back? 
Okay, and similar to June OS's rollback feature, we're going to walk through a bunch of examples uh, with rolling back on Cisco devices because that is also very important in a troubleshooting uh, operational perspective. So here we are. So we're going to say, um, and actually, I type config. I didn't want to get into global config. So basically, from privilege exec, all I have to say is configure, replace, and then give the name of the file. Now, you know when you type dir, right? Or if I were to type delete, and the delete command, let's type dir, see what we've got in there. So that base config file. So that's going to be, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that file a victim here. So we're going to say delete base.cfg. Now, you'll notice I don't have to say flash colon base.cfg. The delete command knows that I mean flash zero colon, right? It knows that. It's, it's implied. With config replace, it, that's not the case. So when I say configure replace, and I say lab 41-r1-tta, and I hit enter, you can see it says error could not open file lab 41 r1 tta for reading now this if you didn't know that you have to have the flash argument in there this might lead you down a rabbit hole trying to figure out and remember we kind of had this happen last night was well hold on is it the fact that dot txt is at the end of the file name is it the file name was it something with the tftp to get the file on there was something did something go wrong right? Well, there's nothing wrong with the file. The error couldn't open the file for reading is because we failed to provide the flash zero or just simply flash argument in the command. So let's come back here and let's say flash colon. So now it knows where to go. You're going to notice, sorry, let me go back. Ah, right, right, right. Sorry about that. So here's, and this is the error that we were seeing last night that we had to deal with. And this is what Evan was was uh, Johnny on the spot last night to run this down. So remember, if I were to say more lab41-router1-tta, when we look at this, this is the file right off of the Netacad website, right? So why is it telling me, and there's no mistakes in here, so why is it telling me when I go to run this config replace command and now I've put the flash argument in there, we get a different error. So it's not telling me that it can't read the file. Now it's telling me that it's not a valid configuration file. Again, this could, and it did send us down that rabbit hole where we were trying to figure out, well, hold on a second, what's wrong? Is it the extension to the file name that got put on there? Is it some invalid character? What, what's happening here? So this is an issue with 15 code. I wasn't able to reproduce this with 12 code. So here's the problem, and this is what Evan uh, Googled up real quickly for us. And let me get the more command back. So you'll notice here the very beginning of what we cut and pasted and what we dragged and dropped, again, the conf what we TFTP'd on here, which is a, an exact cut and paste of the config file from the Netacad site, what we notice is that it simply starts out with two comments and then the service timestamps command. Well, it turns out that if I were to say show run on this device right now, take a look at what we have at the beginning. We have these three exclamation marks, which represent comments, and then this version 15.5 command, right? And what's interesting is you have to have the line that says version 15.5. So these are comments, and I, I'll show you right now that the comments are not needed, right? You don't need to have these three lines. But that line right there is mandatory. Without that line, you're going to continually get this error that says the input file is not a valid config file. So it l appears with the 15 code, specifically the 15 code we're working with, we've been working with 15.5 and 15.6, it appears that the issue is that the config replace command is parsing the config that we're wanting to use as the replacement, and it is trying to validate that, in fact, it is the right version 
for the iOS that we're running. And actually, this is a pretty nice little sanity check, right? Because you don't want to load a config from a 12.4 box and try to put it onto a 15.5 box. There, you know, could be you know feature parity issues, you know, all kinds of trouble that you could run into there. So again, that line is required. Now, uh, if we were to look at the file that we saved off, remember when we did the cut and paste? That wasn't an issue. The cut and paste and the drag and drop didn't care, right? It wasn't a problem. So if I were to say uh, dirt tissue labs lab four one and then TTA okay so if I were to say more and we'll say r1 dash lab 41 dash TTA and let's come down over here to let's come down over here to dir and let's change this to more so let's look and remember we did a copy running config and saved the running config off as this file name into the directory structure directory structure we created and when we did that it auto magically puts this version 155 command in there so the copy and paste and then the copy running config saving it off right and then the drag and drop and then the copy running config and putting it somewhere those both put the 15.5 version in there, right? So those are both going to add that required line into the config. So if you don't do that, if you're TFTPing the file and you're going to use config replace, you'll need to add that line to each of the configurations and it's going to have to correspond on the you know the distribution layer switches are running i think 1502 the access layers i think we're running 152 so you're going to want to make sure that those match up so how do we address this so i'm simply going to go ahead and over here and you can't see over here but what i'm doing is i'm saying version 15.5 so i'm making a change uh, on my MacBook where I have a copy of this config where we're TFTPing from. I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to TFTP that file back over here. And we'll just put it in the flash. And there you go, right? Copy TFTP flash. And it copied it in there as lab 41 R1 TTA. Uh, now you're probably wondering, well, wait a second, Travis, how come you didn't have to put in the TFTP IP, the server IP address, and the name of the file. Where did all that stuff go? Well, in this file, in this configuration that's on this router, uh, there's a silent. Where is it at? It is there. It is file or quiet. File prompt quiet. And so this configuration option, which wasn't there when I TFTP the first time, is now on the router. And so this is why it didn't prompt me for anything. It just simply ran it and it took the defaults that it thought it would get which would be the IP and then the name of the file right because those were already we'd already used those so when I say dir you can see we've got lab 41 r1 TTA right uh, and I should have looked at the byte count but we don't really have to look at the byte count I can just simply say more lab 41 dash r1 dash TTA and there it is right there. Now I'm going to put it above the comments here. So now let's run config replace flash colon and I'm going to simply cut and paste this and let's see do we get the error message? No, we don't. It immediately goes ahead and again we've got that silent option in there so it doesn't prompt me. Typically you get prompted. It's going to ask you are you sure this is what you want to do? And let's take a look at how quickly uh, this happens, right? Pretty quick, right? Pretty quick. All of this that we were receiving is because of how the router, how the configuration on the router uh, was prior to me doing that. But as you can see, the config replace command works great. Again, very, very important that if you're going to use the config replace, and actually let me just pull back up the more command here. You're going to have to add that version in there, especially if you're dealing with the 15 code that we're dealing with. It won't work without that. And we saw that with those error messages, right? And now we know how to fix it. 
All you have to do, and you would do this on your switches as well, is simply say show run, hit enter, find that value, and throw it in the config file that you're saving off that you're going to TFTP onto the server. And config replace works great. Now, this uh, access layer switch that I have here, this is running, oh, wait a second, it's already, so it's got the config on here. Hold on one second. So it's got the config on here. If I say show version, you can see I'm running 12.255 SE10. But what's interesting is that's not an issue on the 12 code. So if I were to say more, and let's take a look at this. Here's the, and again, I copy and pasted this into uh, Acrobat. Uh, not Acrobat, I apologize. Brackets. I copy and pasted this into Adobe Brackets, saved it, TFTP'd it up here onto this access layer switch, and you can see there is no version statement here. None. But watch what happens when I say, and we're going to see, we're probably going to see a bunch of errors here, but that's okay. So when I say, uh, config replace flash colon and then use that file name and it looks like oh I'm sorry it buffered a bunch of other stuff so again we're going to go ahead with config replace and flash colon and let's say ALS1 and again no version in here and this is 12.2 code and this is what you would be prompted with. We, now, again, I had that, that silent option from the config. The troubleshooting config was in there. So we didn't see this. But we're going to be prompted, hey, are you sure this is what you're going to want to do? I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to hit enter. And take a look. It's rejecting some commands, but that's got to do with the trunk mode on this switch. And it's 12.2. It's a 3750. And it's older. But all of these other commands that are on here are being added in. And it never told us that, hey, this is an invalid config file. We didn't see that. Uh, so I'm inclined to say uh, that this has something to do with the 15 code. Again, let's go ahead and do a quick review. So we've talked about three different ways we can get the configuration files from Netacad, right? So from being logged into the Netacad site and pulling up uh, each of the different configs for each of the different devices, I can do a copy. I can paste it directly onto the router if I'm in global config mode, or I can copy it and paste it into brackets or some text editor, save it off, and then I can drag and drop it if I'm in global config mode. And then the final method that we looked at to get the configurations onto the devices is I can copy it, paste it into some text editor, brackets, sublime text, whatever, save it, to the local system, your Mac, your Windows box, whatever the case may be, TFTP the file up onto the router or switch, and then do the config replace command. But remember, with the config replace command and these configurations and 15 code that we are using, you have to add that version statement at the top of each of those files. And then also remember, for both cut and paste options, or I should say with the cut and paste direct option right onto the device, or the drag and drop, whether you're in secure CRT or you're using TerraTerm, make sure you adjust that line send buffer time. And I would pump it to 100 milliseconds initially. If you have issues there, I jump right to 250. Okay. So hopefully this has really given you a comprehensive review of some of the hurdles that we had last night. Again, major thanks to Evan uh, for digging that version command up because uh, a lot of people want to do the TFTP option. But again, I've presented you here with three different ways that you can get these configs onto the Cisco devices. All right. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Enjoy your weekend. I will see you next Thursday night. Have a great weekend.